Hello everybody and welcome to Dulce America. My name is Bing Futch and I'm here to share some more Mountain Dulcimer workshop material with you. And uh, this one is going to be sort of a refresher and sort of something to think about as an exercise to help you move bar chords up and down the fretboard and also uh, work on uh, looking for melody and also improvising melody. So let's start things off first of all by going over our three major scales. We're in DAD tuning and the three major chords we're going to use in DAD tuning are D, built off of the first note of the scale, G, built off the fourth note of the scale, and A, built off of the fifth note of the scale. All of those coming from the D major scale, which is our open home key. So knowing where those scales are located um, offer a lot of fantastic benefits that I'll talk to you about in a second. First of all, let's take a look at our D major scale. Coming up the melody string and bass string, using every fret except for the sixth fret. And if you have a one and a half fret, you won't use that either. Coming straight up, I'll play both strings at the same time like this. Bass string and melody string holding that D major scale up the fretboard to the seventh fret and back down again. G major scale is going to live right here at the 3rd fret and we're going to play across the strings. Bass string, 3, 4, 5, and 6 are our fret numbers. Middle string, 3, 4, 5, and 6 are our fret numbers. There is our G major scale. We can also play a G major scale from the 3rd fret on the melody string up to the 10th fret and um, we won't use the six and a half fret. A couple of G major scales there. A major scale will start with the middle string. Just like we played the D major scale from open to the seventh fret, not using the sixth fret or the one and a half, we'll do the same thing. Same frets, but different notes, different pitches on the middle string. This is A major. And then we'll do a A major scale across the strings coming from the fourth fret playing four, five, six and a half, seven on the bass string, four, five, six and a half, seven on the middle string. All right, so those are our three major scales, D, G, and A, and a couple of different ways to play each of those on this uh, fretboard. So the bar chord, if you've been watching recently, we talked about how to uh, divine what a chord is based on the chord shape, what the root of the chord is, and then figuring out whether it's major or minor. Um, so we've got our uh, slant shape chord, roots on the middle string, L shape chord, roots on the bass string, extended slant, roots on the melody string. The other chord shape that we'll be using an awful lot is the bar chord. It's also known as a five chord, a fifth chord, a root five chord, or my favorite, a power chord. And I'm said with way too much relish and gusto. Um, what it is basically, it is the root of the chord and the fifth of the chord. It is not that third that defines whether it's a major or a minor chord. A major chord would be root, major third, and perfect fifth. A minor chord would be a root minor third and a perfect fifth. But this particular chord, the bar chord, only plays the root in the fifth, only features the root in the fifth. Meaning, bar chords can be used for major or minor chords since that third is missing. Our open strum is a bar chord. It's D, that's the first, that's the root. A, that's your fifth, the perfect fifth. And then D an octave above the bass string, so we only have two notes in this uh, particular chord, and technically a chord needs to be three notes or more, but it still works for what we need it to do. The bar chord then, if that's open, if we simply put our fingers down on every string straight across the frets, we will then pick up different bar chords moving up. And to name it, just go by either the bass string or the melody string in DAD tuning. I tend to think about the bass string, it's the lowest note, and it anchors everything inside of that chord. 
So if this is D, A, D, and that's a D5 chord, we could call it D, we could call it D minor, depending on the application, but right now we'll call it D, bar at the one. We've got E that we're playing on the bass string and on the melody string, so that would work as an E5 chord. It would work as an E major chord. It would work as an E minor chord. Very, very flexible. So just keep moving it up the scale. Remember that D major scale? D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D. So you can move the bar chord up exactly the same way. D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, and D. So that really comes in handy. You can do a bar for the C here. You can do a bar for the F at the one and a half fret if you've got that. Bar chords are very, very, very flexible and um, they help us a lot. Now, mountain dulcimer players back in the day would play against the drone. So hence the reputation for not being able to play in anything but the key of D. But if we use the bar chord, we are now changing the chord as we move along. What's nice about this is that we can change that chord and we can still solo. Coming out of the bar, and I'll address this now, that some people use these three fingers, the middle, ring, and pinky, to play the bar like so. That leaves the index finger to come in and play other notes here, which comes in real handy if we were switching, say, for example, between a G major chord at the 3rd fret or a G5 chord. Putting the thumb down the 5th uh, fret would make it a complete because a G major chord, because we actually are playing B, we're playing the major 3rd there. If I want to go from G to E minor, I can just put my index finger down there and drop my thumb in place, so I can go back and forth between those two very easily. However, I like to use these three fingers for barring, and then I tend to just switch them out around, play a little finger twister if I need to get them into place. That's just a habit, been very, very hard to break, and um, as long as it doesn't slow me down or you down, doesn't matter how you use your fingers, but uh, either way, those three fingers or those three fingers, either way you're going to leave the thumb available for you to use. So coming out of the bar, Remember our G major chord? That's a phone ringing. But I'm going to keep working through this so I can get this episode done. Um, so we've got three. Third fret right there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to use the thumb and we're going to walk up the scale. Remember three, four, five, six on the bass string, three, four, five, six on the middle string. If I bar at the third fret, I no longer have to play the first or fifth notes, because I'm already covering them, so I just use the thumb to pick these notes up right here. So we can access the entire G major scale while providing a G chord behind it. That's going to be very essential when you're looking for melodies. If you're moving to the G chord and you need to find the melody, usually not always, but usually the melody can be found in the associated scale. You want to associate a G major scale with a G major chord. So usually the melody is going to be right in there, so if you're looking for it, look no further than the space where that scale lives. The same thing applies for coming on down to a D. We don't have to bar anything, but we can certainly still play that scale. And the same thing applies for A major. We can bar at the 4th fret, play our A major scale. Now, that's the major chords. We can do the same thing for our minors. For a diatonic scale, the minors for us are going to be built off of the 2nd, 3rd, and 6th notes of the scale. That would be E minor, F sharp minor, and B minor. Notice I went from bar to completing an L shape in order to make those, those minor chords. If you wanted to, you could put a little A minor in there too, because we've got 
a C natural. All right, so here's the exercise. Basically, you just want to move these bar shapes around and then come out of the scale and noodle. Have fun, improvise, or look for specific melodies. That's just something fun that you can do when you're hanging out with the Mountain Dulcimer at home. Create your bar, remember your scales, move the bars around, change your chords, and play in the melody using your thumb. And in no time, not only will you be making stuff up and sounding really good, but also you'll be able to easily know where to look to find melodies when you're trying to figure out songs, tunes, or your own arrangements. Thank you very much for watching, and I'd like to say a big hello to Jeffrey Hamilton out there in Lancaster, Pennsylvania one of the patrons on Patreon uh, who pledged at an amount in order to get a shout out from the studio here at Casa de Milagro. Hello, Jeffrey. Thank you so very, very, very much. And uh, thank you for your support on Patreon. If you'd like to find out more about Patreon, go to Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Bing Futch and find out how you can become a part of the art. Until next time, this is Bing Futch. Have fun and make a lot of music.